we're running a little bit behind, so we're gonna we're gonna speed through it. Wipe the scowl off your face, Wayne. This is not an advertisement for Syngenta. See, the problem is when you hand out a uh, piece of information like this with a Syngenta program, you got Keith Rucker from Bear Crop Science, and you got Wayne Brown in the back, and they're thinking. Well, where's mine? Well, I just had a bunch of these left. This is a training aid today, Wayne, not a, uh, go back to my booth it's not, yeah, things. it's not an advertisement. If you're interested, and I know you will be, the company Bear Crop Science, I have some of theirs up front, okay? Right. So I got those. If you go to the headline booth, they've got theirs as well. And if you go to Wayne's booth, he will buy you lunch today and <laughs> give you a copy of one. He got, well, there you go, all right? So I knew, I knew, you know, when you live on the edge as an extension specialist, you're going to die by the sword, if that makes any sense. But I got these as well, all right? A little bit behind, so I want to drive through. But the first point to make is, if you look behind me, how many of you all as growers have seen these at meetings before? Have you seen them in county offices? Have you seen these before? How come you don't pick them up? How come you don't take them home with you? All right, maybe you all are the three growers who do do it, all right? But my talk today is simply to go over. This is, I usually don't try to sell anything. I leave that to Keith and to Wayne and the, and the company guys. But I'm selling something today, and what I'm selling is Peanut RX. Because I absolutely believe whether you're with Syngenta or Bear or Nichino or BASF or SIPCAM or now DuPont, okay? They are standing with us in the university system, and this is something growers need to be aware of. We're going to sell Peanut RX today, and hopefully when you see this in the future, you're going to use it. Or at least you're going to be aware of it. I really don't care to the growers in the room. I don't care what fungicide program you use. What I do care is you have the information you need to make the best decision for you based upon cost of production and efficacy of these chemicals. And Albert just showed some great data on that. Because when you know a peanut crop like you do, it's very difficult to control disease for two reasons. One, we got a number of them. Leaf spots, white molds, limerots, CBR, we got nematodes. Every part of that plant and every part of the fruit, which is the pods, is, is affected. The second thing, which makes it even more difficult, is that if we're trying to protect against leaf spot, we're making foliar applications, protecting against soil-borne diseases can be very difficult. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. <laughs> what I want to go over is what's the value of peanut prescription programs. And the diseases we look at in peanut prescription are three of the most important. Not the only disease. Oh, hey, Nathan, how you doing? That means throwing me off. Nathan Tyson, if anybody knew he was here, he's here now. That's right, throwing me off. All right, good to see you. Leaf spot diseases, very important. White mold, the number one disease for growers in the state today. Spotted wilt used to be, white mold is now. In your area, Mr. McClendon, sometimes CBR is more of a problem, but as a whole, white mold is the number one problem. And then tomato spotted wilt virus. Luckily, we can say for most growers, in most cases, spotted wilt has not been the problem it has been. But these are the three diseases, leaf spot diseases, white mold, and tomato spotted wilt virus that we want to manage better more cost effectively using Peanut RX. And that's where I'm going to get in today. My talk for the next 12 minutes is on better management using Peanut RX. Now, better management to me doesn't necessarily mean you always get the best disease control. Okay? The best disease control may not be the best management. What's the best management? In my opinion, the best management is the one where you make the most money as a farmer. You know, really, we're not here so much to control leaf spot as we are to make more peanuts, right? We're not here so much to control white mold as we are to make more peanuts. And that's what Peanut RX do. I can't guarantee you using Peanut RX, you're always going to have the cleanest field, but you're going to be clean enough and you're going to make more money, okay? When it comes to production fields, well, all fields have the same disease problems and the same pressure. You take peanut fields across the state, they all have the same pressure? The answer is no. We know that. I've done any number of trials, I go out here and I don't get any results and I say I blew the trial, I didn't do it right, but now I realize it's not. Some areas where you're farming, you need less disease control, some have higher risk, it makes a lot of sense. And if you believe that, if you believe that they need different levels of control, can we predict? Can we make a prediction today about what the disease pressure is going to be in July? Okay, now we're going to keep hedging on that, we don't want to just say okay, I'm going to close my eyes and say it's not going to be bad. And then July, you don't even look, all right? But we can make the prediction. And the thing is, is if we can make that prediction, if we can predict what the disease risk is going to be in a field, can we maximize profit by tailoring our fungicide programs, okay? So first thing, you all agree with me, I hope that there's a difference between fields. 
five years out of peanuts is different from peanuts behind peanuts. That's no, there's nothing rocket science there. Second thing is, can we treat them differently? Absolutely. And the third thing is, can we grow as maximize profits by treating them? 2004, just an example, peanut, uh, cotton field by my house. Can we make any predictions about this field for peanuts? Don't remember about 2004. Can you make any, what was the previous crop there? This was taken in March. What was the previous crop? Cotton stubble, all right? So you know the year before he had cotton. What kind of tillage does he have out there? It's certainly not strip tillage, is it? So already we know a little bit about the rotation. We know a little bit about the tillage practices. We know a little bit about the crop they're going to go into. So we can already make predictions about what the risk is. This is where peanut RX come in. There are two components to peanut RX. The first one, which is where extension comes in, is on the back of your card. If you flip your card over to the back, okay, that is the education. That's our risk index. It's based upon our original spot of wood index. We get this from results from research and from our experience. Okay? And this, this is designed to help every grower in the state, even if you don't use a prescription fungicide program, it's to let you assess what your risk is. It takes two minutes to go through. All right? How do we develop it? We continue to develop it every year. We work on this every year. Every time a new variety comes out, every time we get new data in, we're tweaking this scale. It's to assess the impact of the factors we're going to talk about in disease severity. We do the research on the fungicide programs. When Nichino stands behind an artisan program, when Keith Rucker stands behind a ProLine Provost program, when we get a BASF program, it's not that we just wrote it down. We have worked with the companies, and the companies have said, Bob, based upon your risk index, we can support these programs. Okay? What are the benefits? If you look at this chart on the back, what are the benefits? Everybody in here knows that rotation's important. Everybody knows in here that varieties can differ in disease resistance. What this index does is it allows us to quantify what those value is. What's the value of being five years out of peanuts as opposed to one year out of peanuts? Well, more is better, right? But this helps us to quantify it. What's the difference in resistance to white mold between Georgia 07W and Georgia 06G, well, Bill Branch says Georgia 07W's got better white mold resistance, right? This helps you put it into an overall package that you can use. And what are the factors? What are the ingredients? We know there's probably more that we don't understand, but here's the ones that we look at in peanut RX, whether it's for spot of wilt or leaf spot or white mold. The variety, huge. Crop rotation. The time you plant, Albert talked about that. Albert said you plant earlier, you got problems with spotted wilt. You plant later, you got problems with what? Leaf spot. Your final plant stand, your tillage, irrigation field history, and seconds. I don't have to tell you, but what we can tell you is that with the risk index that I'm trying to sell to you today, that I want you to pick up these cards when you see them now and go home and look at them, is that we can go in there, assign risk, assign a total risk to least spot white mold and spot of wilt, and then these companies say, we've got a specific program for that. What's the value of a specific program, Paul? The value is you're putting the right amount of fungicide out where you need it, and you're spending the right amount of money. Okay? Let's talk about the 2013 index. Bob, why does the index change every year? Because we get better. We get more data. We get new varieties. We learn something new. We get a new fungicide like ProLine out there. How do we put it in there? Our index continues to evolve. And here's the 2013 index. Spotted wilt, leaf spot, white mold, limb rot. We used to do limb rot, Wayne. Why don't we do limb rot anymore? Why not? Fortunately for you growers, limb rot has not been a big enough problem over the past 10 years that we can actually get good numbers. If we don't have good numbers, we don't put them in there. But the main thing is, is this shows you the maximum number of points assigned to any category. The more points there are, the greater the importance for risk. A variety with 50 points right there is a lot more susceptible to spot of wilt than one with five points. More is not better in this situation. More is worse. And if you look at these ellipses, four ellipses out there, we got a number of factors, don't we? And they all contribute. They all contribute to your risk, but the ones that are most important for the disease we talk about are how long has it been since you had peanuts in a field, what variety are you planting, when did you plant them, and what kind of plant population did you get. That's the lion's share of the points. Those are the ones that really make a difference. The others have impact for sure, but not the impact that they do. 
And then what we do is we break it into low risk fields, high risk fields, and medium risk fields. Okay? Low risk fields mean you've probably been out of peanuts for a while. You got a good resistant variety. You got good rotation, you got tillage practice at work, your planting date's right. High risk could be you're planting peanuts behind peanuts or every other year. You got a weaker variety as far as resistance goes. Those factors. And do you think you need the same amount of fungicide here to maximize yields you do in a high risk field? No, you don't. But growers tend to spray it the same. Why? In my opinion, why do growers spray a low risk field the same as they do a high risk field? Two reasons. The first reason is it's just easy to remember what you're going to spray. It takes less time to think that out. And the other reason is you've got a lot of confidence in the fungicide program. We've done a really, really good job convincing growers, peanut growers, you want to make top yields, you want to go to the achievement club, you want to stay in business, you need to use a good fungicide program. And sometimes it's hard to let go of something that's worked for you. What I'm telling you is you don't just have to believe Bob. These companies will stand behind him too. The way it works, 2013 index you go through with your field, you go through each of those categories, there's what you might be one year between peanuts, if you're still planting Georgia green, what's your field history, irrigated, et cetera, et cetera. You come up with your points. And then with your points, and again, where are you doing that? Each one of these companies, this is a worksheet. This isn't an advertisement, Wayne, it's a worksheet, right? It's a training aid. Forget that a bound is on the front, okay? You go through, I can pick on Wayne because he'll, he'll get me later, I'm sure. But you go through and you figure out what your points are. And if you're high risk, or low risk or moderate risk for these diseases, you make your choices up on what you're going to do. Okay? 2012, just to show you an example, here's our points. Georgia Green for spotted wilt was 30, Tiff Guard was 10. Y'all see that? 30 versus 10 for tomato spotted wilt bars. How do you interpret that? Well, Bob, Georgia Green gets more spotted wilt than Tiff Guard does. That's true. But the interpretation is Georgia Green is three times more susceptible to spotted wilt than Tiff Guard is. 30 versus 10. Look at leaf spot. What we can say is they got all about the same leaf spot values, but TIF guard's a little bit better. If you look at white mold as far as 2012, 6G, which a lot of people plant versus 7W, we would say what? 6G's twice as susceptible to white mold as 07W is. Ah, but it's tricky. That was right in 2012. 2013, we keep looking. We bumped that up just a little bit. It's now 15, right? So it's not quite as good as we thought it was going to be. What's the value? All right, let's say in 2012 you're looking at these varieties, 20 points for 6G versus 10 points for 7W. Okay, this is 2012, it's changed a little bit, but what's the value in that 10 points? Bob says that's twice as susceptible to white mold as is 07W. But what's the value? I guarantee you, I can outshout whoever that is. All right? I promise you that. Don't you all worry about that, I will be heard. All right, that difference in 10 points is the difference between one year of rotation. If you planted Georgia 07W, the points at the end of the season for white, or at your tally for white mold would be the same as if you had less rotation. It's the same as an earlier planting date. It negates the effect of a high plant stand. So by planting a more resistant variety, you have flexibility in the other categories to maintain the same risk. Does that make sense? You plant Georgia 07W versus Georgia 06G, the effect on white mold by planting that resistant variety allows you poorer rotation. You don't want that, but that's what it makes up for. With leaf spot, TIF guard versus leaf, uh, Georgia 06G, that five point difference minimizes the impact of your planting date on leaf spot. It adds value to your rotation and it minimizes the impact of irrigation. Irrigation increases leaf spot, you plant 06G or TIF guard, TIF guard minimizes that irrigation difference, okay? So you can transfer those points around. What about rain? You look in this index and there's not a single spot in there about rain. What's rain due to disease? Increases it. We ask you to use common sense. Put that in the magazine, all right? Bob says, please, when you're doing this, before you come after him, use some common sense. If it's raining a bunch and you got hurricanes, guess what? Switch up. Tighten up. If you know your situation is changing, this works 99 times out of 100. 99.9 .9 times. But if there's a tropical storms coming in, Amanda, let's, let's use some common sense. What about the weather we're having out there right now? It's going to change, but if it stayed like this, that's going to affect our risk a little bit. We can pr prepare. But if it stays warmer, be on the lookout for nematodes, be on the lookout for thrips, be on the lookout for white mold. 
If it stays warm this summer, I mean this uh, spring and winter, we got to be planning for white mold to come in early. Here's our fungicides, last section. What time is it, Abraham? You got in the watch? Uh, seven till. Seven till. Okay, I started late, but I can, I can make it. I can get through it, all right? When Tim Brenneman walks in the door, I stop. All right, here is our fungicide list, okay? And it keeps getting busier and busier and busier, all right? And the thing to remember is what I want you to do as growers is to use the right combination of fungicides to make the most money. And spending the least amount of money up front may not make you the most money in the end. Tebuconazole is going to be very popular this year. But just remember, Tebuconazole doesn't solve all your problems. But what we want to do with Peanut RX is we want to take this and turn it into something that you all can use. What are prescription fungicide programs? Any grower who's going to start spraying 30 days after planting, spray every 14 days, and finish out the season with a chlorothalonil can quit listening right now. If you have decided that you're going to spray seven times on a 14-day schedule come hell or high water, then you don't need to listen anymore because prescription fungicide programs say we can make you money if you do your risk, if you do your risk and you find out what the right timing is. Goals are to have an adequate, ensure adequate fungicide program to maintain disease control. I'm not going to tell you you're going to win the beauty contest on Lee Spot every year but you're going to have good enough control, maintain yields, and maximize profit. How do you maximize profit? You put the right amount of fungicide, the right number of trips across the field. And who endorses it? If it's just University of Georgia and Auburn and Florida standing up here, guess what? There's, no, there's nothing behind it. But these companies that you see listed here, they all say, we buy into Peanut RX, and we will support our programs if it's used appropriately. Prescription fung fungicides in general, programs, I'm not here to tell you, that when we first started this, I was told you cannot talk about spraying a field less than seven times. Do you know why? Because they told me you wouldn't hear that. They told me what you would hear as a grower is Bob says, if you grow peanuts, you can spray four times and make the same yields if you sprayed seven. Did I ever say that? No. You're smarter than that. What we say is, if you do your risk index and you find you're at low risk, you can spray fewer times. If you do your risk index and you're high, don't spray four times. Or if you don't do it at all, you better spray seven. Okay? Endorsed, these programs may evolve over time, but they're thoroughly tested. You don't see University of Georgia logo on them unless we've tested them, and you can look at these programs and see it. Most any fungicide program you've got, you won't see one here for tebuconazole. It can still be a peanut RX program, and I can help you with that, but what's the difference? If Bob comes up with it by himself, it'll probably work, but if you happen to have a problem, which is unlikely, who are you going to go see? Bob. Okay? If you use one of these company programs from Bayer, Syngenta, or Nichno, you won't have a problem, but if you had questions, who could you see? You could ask me, you could ask your county agent, you could ask Keith, you could ask Wayne, you could ask the other guys, all right? Basically, what happens? Here's our seven spray, 14-day program on top, low-risk program, low-risk disease. We start later, we spread the interval out, four sprays. Never, a, I have never had a complaint. Moderate-risk field, Start a little bit later, spread them out, three sprays, or five sprays, and then our standard high-risk field. <coughs> Do I care what you spray? I don't. I don't. I'm trying to pitch it to you, though. Why wouldn't you be interested in that? It's never failed. I hesitate to say never, but as of today, it's not. All right? Prescription fungicide program, Syngenta, Nichino, Wayne Nichino, right there, okay? He's going to get me. There's even a veto's got them. BASF has them. I want to show you how the evolution occurs, the revolution. 2011 or 2010, here is Bear Crop Sciences Risk Index, their prescription fungicide programs. Here's ProLine, in furrow. By the following year, you'll see ProLine is also included as early emergence. These companies, as they develop their programs, they may modify them. They may change them to fit suit the growers better, but they're not static either. Okay. Last three slides. Abraham up here in the front. I pirated these from Abraham, okay? This field is a combination of two years worth of data. This is where I show you. Don't just tell me, show me. 2011, 2012, Billy Mills and Adipalgus, we always have disease there. Combination in 2011, we had high risk. 2012, we had moderate risk. Abraham sprayed low risk, moderate risk, and high risk. Here is your Syngenta program. Here's a SIPCAM program here. Yeah. He saw that when you sprayed Seven times you had a little bit less leaf spot than when you sprayed five or four times. 
when you sprayed seven times, a little bit more leaf spot when you sprayed four or five times. But there's your overall if you didn't spray. So is that a failure? Abraham found out that you got more disease if you sprayed fewer times. Well, first off, based upon this, we never would have sprayed four times, and we probably wouldn't have sprayed five times, all right? But the story doesn't end there. Let's look at white mold. In this situation, very little white mold, all the programs did well. We're spraying a low-risk program in a high-risk field, and we still get good white mold control. Would I tell you to do that? No. High risk, you better spray, but what we're showing these are conservative, but most important, most important to the grower. It's not how pretty the peanuts look at the end of the season, it's how much yield you make. And so in this situation that Abraham did with four sprays, here's his yield with his Ingenta program, five sprays, he actually made numeric less with seven sprays. I still would have sprayed seven times in a high risk field. SIP camp program, there was no difference. The beauty contest, as far as the leaf spot went, yeah, we had a little bit more leaf spot. But at the end of the season, the program is supposed to work that we maintain yields by spraying appropriately. With that, I'm going to stop. These programs, peanut prescription, is endorsed by SIPCAM, by BASF, by Bear Crop Science, by Syngenta, by Nichino, now by DuPont. They've all got programs. We can come up with programs that they don't cover. Okay? And also they're endorsed and developed, all of the index is developed by these universities. So last thing for every grower in this room, okay? What I hope you'll do, and I got some of the, uh, BA, the uh, Bear Crop Science posters up here. You got the ones from Syngenta. I hope if nothing else, even if you spray like you always have, that when you think about 2013, you're aware of what your risk is. This is critical to know what your risk is, what can you do to minimize your risk, and this on the front offers you opportunity to manage your disease differently. All right, any questions for me at all? Nathan, you always got a question, but it can't be about what I'm wearing, what I had for breakfast, anything like that. It's got to be related to the topic we're here now. What I do want to say about Nathan Tice, if you don't know him, up until recently he sold cotton seed. But what makes me very happy is now Nathan is in a peanut meeting, so that's good. You've, you've come around. So. so, all right. If you'll see that your next session starts at... I believe 10 o'clock. And so you got time to move around, but I appreciate you all being here. I'll be here for a while, so if I can answer any questions. But I uh, appreciate you all being here today. Thank you.